the death of George III's father, the demise of Frederick, the Prince of Wales, eldest son of George II and Queen Caroline, remains somewhat unclear. Let's explore the possible causes. The circumstances leading to the demise of Frederick Louis, eldest son of King George II and Queen Caroline, remain veiled in uncertainty. Mere weeks after his 44th birthday, amidst his fervent pursuits of cricket and tennis, a forceful blow from a ball inflicted upon him an injury that spawned a grievous abscess. Subsequently, amidst the tranquil confines of his Kew Garden on a cold March day, Frederick fell prey to a chilling ailment that swiftly morphed into pleurisy, a relentless affliction consuming his lungs with merciless fervour. Despite his valiant struggle against the ravages of the disease, fate ultimately claimed him amidst the serene sanctuary of his garden. Thus, Frederick Louis, son of kings and heir to the throne, breathed his last, leaving behind a legacy that spoke to the fragility of life and the enduring power of passion and purpose. Born and raised in Hanover, Frederick arrived in England in 1728, after his father ascended the throne. Despite his uncertain command of English and an unconventional appearance, resembling a frog, he possessed a certain charm and indulged in pursuits such as gambling, sports and relationships with women, which endeared him to the English populace. However, his relationship with his family, particularly his parents, was marred by intense animosity, sparking national scandal. The reasons behind the tension remained elusive, but George II often disowned Frederick, claiming he was not his true son. Frederick's mother famously vilified him, labelling him as the greatest ass, liar, canal and beast, and expressing a wish for his removal from the world. His parents favoured his younger brother, the Duke of Cumberland, adding fuel to the familial discord. Courtiers like Lord Hervey exacerbated tensions and conflicts over finances and political influence further strained relations. Frederick's constant demands for more money, his opposition to his father's minister, Sir Robert Walpole, and personal slights against his mother fueled the flames of hostility. Despite the turmoil, Frederick was a devoted father to his many children and pursued interests in the arts, music and outdoor activities. His passing elevated his eldest son, the future George III, to heir apparent. He was interred in Westminster Abbey with minimal ceremony without royal attendance, epitosing his fraught relationship with his family. An anonymous epitaph perfectly captured his legacy. Here lies Fred, who was alive and is dead. There's no more to be said. So how did he die? Upon his return to Leicester House, nestled in the heart of Leicester Square, Frederick's health took a precarious turn, prompting the urgent summons of three esteemed physicians. With hope flickering amidst the dimly lit chambers, their efforts turned to bloodletting in a desperate bid to alleviate the prince's affliction. Initially, a glimmer of optimism prevailed as Frederick exhibited faint signs of improvement. However, the tides of fate swiftly turned as the abscess, lurking within, chose this moment to rupture unleashing a cascade of unforeseen complications. It was on the fateful evening on the 20th that Frederick, confined to the confines of his bed, found himself ensnared in the merciless grip of excruciating coughing fits. In a poignant moment etched in the annals of history, witnesses recount how the prince, his pallid countenance contorted with agony, placed trembling hands upon his tormented stomach and whispered the haunting words, Giselle Le Mort, a stark acknowledgement of his impending demise. His gravity of the situation dawned upon those gathered, a chilling cry pierced the air as Frederick's loyal German page, who stood vigil at his side, recognised the ominous signs of departure, proclaiming the prince is departing. In a scene fraught with anguish and despair, Frederick's devoted wife, stationed at the foot of the bed, was seized by a frantic urgency as she grasped a flickering candle and hastened to her husband's side, her heart racing with the desperate hope that perhaps, amidst the shadows of uncertainty, a glimmer of life still remained. 
Alas, her fervent prayers were met with the cold embrace of silence as she beheld the lifeless form of her beloved prince. In the aftermath of this tragic event, medical scrutiny sought to unravel the enigmatic forces that conspired to claim Frederick's life. A post-mortem examination, conducted with meticulous precision, identified suffocation as the grim harbinger of his demise. Triggered by the rupture of this malevolent abscess, yet amidst the labyrinth of medical conjecture, a prevailing consensus emerged, suggesting that Eumonia, lurking in the shadows, had cast its sinister veil over Frederick's final moments, sealing his fate with its icy grip.